particular projector is the oldest of the two machines we're going to look at today and it's actually a portable machine and we've got to remove it from its box in order for you to be able to see it. So I'll try and get it out, it is a bit difficult. various parts I think are stashed away inside and that's the drive belt that's the chimney top because originally this this projector had an arc lantern inside it and this was your vent chimney for the top of it some electrical cable and a little plug. Now these were for the lamp and the lamp is somewhere around me. I'll show it in a minute. Uh, inside you can see there that's, that's the projector lamp. Now this is a conversion. Originally it wouldn't have had a lamp. Uh, these clamps that are on it would have originally had carbons, but this, this is a conversion to lamp. That's it. Right now, the projects are all assembled once you've got it onto side. Uh, so this gets lifted up to that position, that's your top spool arm. And really, to do it properly, well we can't do it right now, is that the lower spool arm would hang over a, de or a table or something like that. I'll demonstrate that in a minute. And uh, racking, that's to move your framing of your film up and down. And this particular projector is unusual in that it's a ver very early beta mechanism. I don't know if you can get in close to it, Mark, to see it. Now, of course, it's with it being so old, neither, neither one of these two projectors and motorised, they're both hand cranked and that's the projectionist crank handle on the front there and that's your front shutter that spins round and this particular mechanism has got what's called a governor on it which is very clever because once the projectionist has got up to a certain speed uh, and this governor balls fly around once you get to a certain speed the shutter opens you can see the shutter flip up and then if the projection is slows down, it drops down as a safety device because when this lantern was lit with carbons inside, there was terrific heat. And if that heat got onto the gate, it would set the fire, uh, the film on fire. Right, and now we've got a front view here of the projector and you can see if I turn the handle the shutter going around blanking the film off every third re revolution of its turn and all the open gears and it's a very light easy mechanism to turn I'm only touching it with my fingers it's going around now you can see there there's a ribbed area that's for the belt and the projectionist had to set all this up of course before his show started because this is made to be taken around to various halls and little village things and set up on, on, on the spot really 
And this, although it looks a simple affair, that's actually a clutch, believe it or not, and as is the top. A little spring on it, and that works against the, that little round disc, and that's a clutch for your top spool. So as that turns, maybe rusted even, that's all. No, it doesn't actually turn. That stays still, and the spool turns on the actual shaft. And this is this is the sort of film cam that the films actually arrive in, uh, and in that, of course, you you got your actual uh, strip of film with no, with no spool inside. It just lay flat inside the tin on a centre, and it was the early film, of course, was nitrate, not like today's safety film, and it was very dangerous. Um, these are the spools. Now, these spools, as you can see, are made to fit exactly that film, and you couldn't, you couldn't use anything bigger, really, because uh, the projectionist can only turn that handle for so long, he's going to get tired, so that's the sort of size you're going to be talking about, uh, as he chugs along there, turning it, got that clipped off, and now you can see how the clutch works, it's made so that the film won't actually spill. Let's tighten up a little. So as the film turns, if you stop the projector, the spool will stop, the clutch will stop it. And on the front, and these are all the original spools by the way. And on the spool there's a little cutout uh, and a flat piece. Now the cutout goes to the spool. There. So it lays flat against the back for the spool to spin on, and the cutout is for you to get your fingers in to open it again. Now, if we turn it, both this spool is freewheeling, that is a driven spool on the front. So the projector then is ready for, for actually setting up with the arc lantern. And inside, all the little lock rollers. Uh, there's a gate catch at the back. You won't be able to see it from there. I'll let you have a look at it later. It springs open at the back. Plus this automatic shutter that comes open when you get to a certain speed. Now behind all that normally would be an arc lantern. And that went inside there. And it was normally an AC lantern. It wasn't DC like today's arc lanterns. It was an AC arc. That's why they're able to exchange it out uh, for a lamp with a flex on it. But nevertheless, very dangerous. Uh, the little, the little uh, brass thing you can see there is actually your viewing uh, port. So if you slide that up, once the carbons are struck inside, uh, I can't show you in this one, I'll show you in the other projector later. Once you've closed the door, by looking through that coloured glass, and it has to be coloured because the light's so bright, it would damage your eyesight if it was to look directly at the arc lantern. So the projection is new that when it slid that arc lantern in, once it got to that position and you could see it through there, that was the correct position. And you could see when you struck it, the actual arc being made across the carbons and adjust the light and there's several adjustments in the back to move it backwards and forwards side to side and to feed the carbons together right i'm just going to show you various control that the projectionist has got over the over the machine now this is just your focus there turn the knob for the focus that lifting up the down, up and down moves the whole gate system and lens up and down to frame the film to make sure because you've got four perforations per frame and it has to be in exactly the right place so that moves it up and down to the right place and then below that is the actual mechanism the main part of the projector which on this model is very unusual and rare it's an early beta mechanism so, in actual fact, when the film goes through the projector, this roller turns and thrashes the film to pull it through the gate. 
So as you turn this this handle, you'll see that happening there on the bottom, and that will be it in the film. And then when you get to the right speed, because the projector is had to build this speed up in order for the shutter to open there, you can see it opening now. And that's the correct sort of running speed. And he's got to keep that up for 10 or 15 minutes while this film's run. And if he does slow down a stop, that shuts off the light. And it's obvious why, when you think the nitrate film would start to burn and explode. So it, things were quite dangerous, really, because this projector would actually be in the hall with the, with the audience. So it's uh, quite a frightening prospect. I'm not surprised the cinematograph act came out. Uh, I'll show you now how the projectionist used to have to operate all these things together. So you've got your film running through the projector. He has to operate the focus to start with. He has to get the framing right. He has to be cranking the handle at the same time. Plus he has to feed the arc lantern with his left hand, which is manually operated. So he needs to be looking through that hole and, and, and watching for the arc uh, while doing all this. So his right hand would be continually running the projector this sort of way. And get it up to speed. There it goes. Then his film needs to be focused there. Not much room to do that. It's a fraction of an inch between the handle it in your hand and not. And then to get your frame in. Then you go back and feed your art lantern. Is to keep this going all the time at the right speed. See, I, I slowed there and the shutter dropped. So he has to get into the swing of all that. Uh, but it, it will be an attempt because I have to clue what I'm doing here. Uh, I know how the gate opens, it's filthy. Uh, we'll just give it a little turn, so that feeds under there, over there. Just a loose flap around the bottom by the looks of it. See if I can get it going. So, that's the guide roller. Take it to film out. Around the guide roller. Under the sprocket. I've never laced this projector before, so it's, it's pretty much guesswork. And it may not work exactly the way it's supposed to because this isn't the correct film. This is safety film, which isn't as stiff as nitrate. And then, so it's not as easy to deal with as that. And that feels very tight, so that's not right. It. Right, so how this beating mechanism works, I've never seen one working before, so we're guessing really. Uh, and it goes around there, underneath the roller. And it's got to take from that loop, so I should imagine it's got to be reasonably tight. So I'll we'll see if it'll work. Yep, she's work. she works. Get it around the spool. Fiddly thing, isn't it? Very fiddly. Uh, not well of that bit, I can't tuck it in there. But we can demonstrate the actual mechanism and how it works. So it should work okay. Uh, and now you can see it hitting the film, pulling it down from the top of the
place in this projector now because what we're going to do, we're going to demonstrate its other use. And uh, its, it's other use, of course, is it, it's also a, a slide projector or a magic lantern, as it's called. Uh, so, if we get all the film out of it. Unlacing is more difficult than lacing. That's it, we've got half the spool. We need to do that because when we swing this projector around, I suspect that the bottom spool is going to foul the base. Now we've only attempted this once before, uh, so I don't. It took me a while to work out what it was for and how it worked. That's the belt. What we need to do then is undo this nut because the whole mechanism on this projector swings around and that's how you get it to be a slide projector. Take that off the bolt and push it out, supposedly. That catch is adjustable, so although it's not in the perfect position, uh, you'll not see that on camera. Like, it, it must have needed adjusting. Uh, it's not being adjusted. This is an adjustable stop right now. To move the whole projector out of the way of the arc lantern, the whole mechanism was slid around like that and stopped at a stop there. And then this is the extra lens, and as you can see, that just screws into that position. Like that. Be so careful with these because. Of course, they've not been used for a long time on the brass, so you can't get your thread crossed, otherwise you'll damage it. And it'll take me a little bit of time to make sure it's absolutely right. Yeah, I'm not going to go any farther than that with it. But the focus is there, and that is to open, to let your light through for each slide. And then the actual slide mechanism is that, which looks pretty ancient and it's probably a little bit rickety. But basically it went in with, with the gaps at the top and slid from one side to the other. So you dropped a slide in it and I think it went in there. it. So a slide will be loaded in that side and a slide in this side and then you pull the slide across, put the other one in position and open it on the screen like that, focus it up. And so this projector, you know, it could do both jobs, it could show film, it could show slides. Now I'm going to show you the slides that it used to show because they're not like slides that you'll recognise today and this box was with the projector and it came with all its slides and you can probably see that if I hold it at an angle can you see through that mark? Mm -hmm. and each one and it's, it had its own, all black and white of course had its own image on uh, so it just dropped in the slide carrier and so and pull across to the next one and there's dozens here, some lovely old slides. And that's a scene of sheep shearing. Mm -hmm. And this box is a marvel, isn't it? <laughs> An unmade box, and it would have had leather strap so you can see the end of the strap and then a metal metal fastener on the end and then it's protected those slides well 
goodness knows how many years. So we'll reset this up. I think I can actually leave that lens in position because it's made to be. And there's a catch there and it locks back into, into there. That's it. It's in. It's back ready for use. And these fastening are coach bolts. That pops through the bottom. Top glass washer. Ready for use again. Right, and of course now that's all clamped up, all the spools come off, the chimney comes off, the spools fold up and everything's packed away in its transit box over there because this is basically a portable projector. Yeah, well, I've a few things on this projector that I want to, to show you. First of all, I'm going to move this out of the way because it's throwing a shadow. Uh, but that's the bottom spool on. You can see there, there's a groove and that's actually been made in there, or burnt in there, uh, with the actual uh, drive belt that's coming from this pulley. So it's, it's burnt its own groove in there, so it just shows you it has been used for quite a while. Okay, well, just a couple of things I want to point out. Uh, just there, you can see that whoever's made this machine has made a provision for a complete extra set of gate springs so those are the springs in the gate that the projection uses to, to, to tension the film. Uh, so he's got a complete spare set there. And this is your main counterweight on the shaft. And that's what gives you your even speed. We now drop that top spool box arm down. Remove the chimney. They all go inside the arc lantern, as does the belt. Everything pushes back, and that's now all ready for transport. When you set these machines up, and you might need to use uh, a lamp instead of an arc lantern because not everybody would allow you to use an art lantern because of the fire risk. Uh, so that, believe it or not, is an adapter that went into a light fitting like that. Uh, there's your switch. And so your light went into that on a bayonet um, plug like that. It's plugged in. And that was your, your power source for your, your projector light. I'll just show you that one. Because this is an original that came with the projector. And these were, I think, upgrades and adaptions because originally this projector won't have had a lamp. But look at the size of that, how beautiful it is. And that's a thousand watt Osram lamp. And still, all the filaments are perfect, so it's probably never even been used. And so this projector now is ready to go in its case. modern machine than the other one we just packed away uh, but it has a complete arc lamp inside uh, that you can actually take out let me just make sure that the carbons aren't going to break or anything all right let this flap up get this out do it the right way flip that up 
then everything should come out and this should slide out. And th this is a complete carbon arc lantern. And while we've been looking around on the desk over there, what was all sorts of rubbish, this was found. And that is actually a mirror, uh, which must be used in conjunction with this. And we think, we're almost certain that that slides on that shaft for you to get your arc uh, reflected on the gate. Um, brilliant. We, never, we didn't find that. We, nobody would have known what it was, but we happened to find it on the desk. I don't know exactly how you place that. Uh, maybe it comes down like that and swizzles around. That's what it's for. So it's a complete system, really. And all your little controls are there. Now, this is an ACR, these are your coils. There's one for the negative and one for the positive. That's your positive coil and that's your negative coil. And then to some little screws there at the side, your cables are attached with a plug on the end. And when you operate your arc, you can see there's little adjustments. That's your side to side movement to line it up with the condenser lens in the back. And then on the back is the, the up and down movement there and then somewhere we should have the striking mechanism let's have a look where that is and that's to adjust it sideways spring loaded so it will automatically go to its right position and there's your carbon touching for your arc to be formed so you put your power on you put your carbons in in the right direction oh, by the way these are GC carbons made in England uh, that's your positive the big one and there's your little negative. Now that would have been longer of course, but it's worn because they've used it. So once you put your power on, the two carbons then touch together, forming the arc, and then the big ball of flame comes out of there. And uh, away you go. But very dangerous. And just think about this, while that's inside there, the projectionist has to get his hands in the back and operate all this while he's running. Uh, so these carbons are actually fed by hand. Uh, so you're operating them with that knob. As the carbons burn away, you're operating them with that knob. So you've got to get your hands around this and feed them together. So that uh, all goes in there. That's it. And then we also found this which looks insignificant, but that is a safety shutter. And there's one on the projector, I'll just pull it all around that way so they can able to see it. Right, now, this projector we think is more modern than the other one. And the reason is, is the engineering, although it does the same things, it's a bicycle, by all means it shows slides as well as film. Uh, it looks engineering wise very much the same, but it isn't. Uh, and the difference is that, because that is what's called an intermittent movement. It's got a proper drive intermittent sprocket movement. And you can see for every quarter turn of the main shaft, that sprocket does a quarter turn and stops. So for every complete revolution, it stops and starts four times. And that's the art of the projector. And that is instead of the old beta mechanism in the other one. Uh, so 
this we also think is more modern because it's not much different you can see by the engineering it's all very much the same but it is actually made or is more expensive a projector than that and it's actually got a cast iron base so as likely as not this actually stood in a cinema projection box because it had a proper stand because these bolts that's what they're made for to bolt it onto a stand now because when you think about it uh, when you've got film in and you're cranking this on you don't want it traveling about on the floor or on a table so it's very smooth beautiful projector and I've actually laced this one before and I found it quite difficult to set up and I think the reason is uh, where early film which was nitrate uh, was much stiffer than modern film which we are using uh, that the loop collapses I'll show you that in a minute but first of all I'll show you a few more things about this I'll turn it round a little As you can see it's got the same sort of setup yeah, but the main difference between this projector and the other one that projector at the back when you turn it into a slide lantern the whole thing swivels around this projector does it in an entirely different way and you can see mounted there is the slide lens so what the projectionist used to do is move the whole lantern across to this side and then the art lantern lined up with the lens and then you have a slide projector so it's better engineered in that respect not as much messing about nice and simple but everything you can see the gearing all looks very much the same as and it does work because I've tried it I'll try and give you a sort of demonstration of it it in the right position it needs to clear the table so you've got your carbons in so first of all the projectionist would set that up it would, it would feed that into the right position you can look through there and see where everything should be and there's your carbons and they would need to line up with that hole that gives you your rough guide and you shut that up strike your lantern up and then adjust the light on the screen and then you're all ready to start when you start to show your film. Now, I didn't expect I would actually be lacing up to demonstrate that, but we thought, how can we show you a projector and it never runs? Uh, because that's what it's built for, it's not built to look at, it's a working. It's a working piece of art, is this? So I'm going to try and lace this. I'm, I'm cockeyed actually. I'm on the wrong side, but because I'm used to doing this, I'll probably manage. Now uh, that's your rolls. So I'm going to clamp it down there. Gate. Now, there's another little roller there. Which I think we need to tuck it behind. to do it and that roll locks it and this oh, so I'm locking that's there locking the roll up and this spool is an over an overlaying spool This isn't nitrate film, of course. This film is polyester, 
and it hasn't got the same body as nitrate. Nitrate uh, is sort of less flexible and stiffer and therefore when you've laced this it would hold its loops but I found difficulty in this because it's running, no I've got it that's the way it runs it's, it's supporting its loops and it's running perfectly Every time I touch this, I find something new about it. Uh, this is fascinating, isn't it? Little front shutter. Right, we've got a, a, a little shutter here that you probably wouldn't notice, nor would anybody else. It's a tiny little thing. But there you've got a little flap. Actually, that is slightly wrong because it won't clear it. That's the wrong. So, when you're normally running your projector, uh, you would get it up to speed, and then this this little flap uh, needs to be opened like that to let your light through. Uh, if at any time during the film performance it breaks uh, and the film would jam in the gate and, of course, catch fire, that's a little safety shutter. Shut it down, turn the light off, and that's the little flap we found on the desk. That's 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 an extra one. It's a piece of spare reel. That's that's what it is. Okay, I've, I've just got a couple of things to demonstrate here. I mean, you can see this. This obviously, this is a little curtain at the back, and the reason was when the art lantern was running. Uh, because it's an open back, because the projectionist needs to get his hand inside, he, he sort of did these sorts inside. Uh, he needed this curtain to stop the light going into the audience's eyes. Uh, but this one that's on is not the original. The original would of course be an asbestos, and that's probably why this is why it's been removed, because it's illegal now. But the asbestos was heat proof and didn't allow uh, it would have caught fire, this for instance, it wouldn't have been any good. And on the back, it's a neat little trick, when you've got ready to run your shell, you clip that up, and that is the vent for your arc at the back. There's a little grill there, and those grills allow the fumes to come out, because when an arc's running, when that's running inside, the fumes have to escape and that's what they built on the top of a little flip up chimney which you know that one was a bit crude but this is a very good piece of engineering and then when you put it all back together you split that curtain in and everything's ready for your next show